Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, we'll go over the V-Ray materials and some of their properties. In the previous episode, we got familiar with the V-Ray Sun and Sky, as well as some shading tips. In this episode, we'll go over the generic V-Ray material and its properties. We'll do so by creating our own material from scratch, then I'll show you how we can tweak pre-existing materials from the Chaos Cosmos assets to meet our desired look. Let's start V-Ray Vision to visualize our scene. We need to first establish what the material is. Just like real-world materials, the 3D materials have real-life properties. Things like color, reflection, refraction and others. When setting up our 3D material, we should always have reference from the real world. Our goal is to copy its properties to the best of our abilities. In this tutorial, we are only going to go over the generic material, as is the most commonly used one. As you have probably noticed, there is a grey tiny house sitting on the table. Let's try to recreate the same material as the toy beside it, which we downloaded earlier from the Chaos Cosmos browser. Material creation can be done in two ways. The first way is by right-clicking on the Material tab in the Asset Editor. The other is to select the Create Asset icon and navigate to the materials. Let's add a generic material and rename it to Tiny House. Now we need to apply the newly created material to our object. Because of the deep integration between SketchUp and V-Ray, we can add it with the SketchUp Paint Bucket tool. Or we can right-click on the material from the Material tab and apply to Selection. The first option we have access to is the Diffuse. The Diffuse is the base color of an object. By clicking on the color swatch, we get the color wheel, from which we can select our desired appearance. If we have a texture we want to apply, we can do so by clicking on the checker icon and then selecting the bitmap texture. Then we need to navigate to our texture of choice and apply it. Now let's look at the reflection tab. For now we're going to talk about reflection color and reflection glossiness. In our world every object reflects a different level of light. As we want to recreate a wood material for our tiny house, let's try to get the appropriate amount of reflectivity for the wood. You can see the amount of reflection better on a flat surface by looking at it from an angle. The reflection glossiness is responsible for adding the shine to our material. For example, metallic materials will have high glossiness. I want this wood to have just a bit of glossiness, so it matches the reference toy we picked. Now let me show you how you can add extra detail on your model. By going close to our tiny house, you can see that it starts to look very flat. In real life, wood crevices have depth to them. We can change that by adding a bump map. From here, you can add textures with detail. Let's load the texture to see the difference. Now all the cracks and crevices on the wood material stand out. We can regulate their intensity with the amount slider. And just like that, we were able to create our own realistic material. I would like to show you how you can tweak pre-existing materials from the Chaos Cosmos. Let's select the cloth on the sofa. When you add an object from the Cosmos browser, you will see the option to merge. This means that you can decompose the object to its materials. You can open an assigned material from here. If there is a texture applied to any slot, you will see the checkbox in blue, just like this one. By right clicking the check mark, you can copy, paste and remove the texture. Color corrections allow us to stylize our texture to meet our desired look. From here you can change the color, saturation and intensity of any texture. I'll do this for some of the objects in our scene. With the help of the color correction, you can see how much control we have over pre-existing materials, giving us even more artistic freedom. In this tutorial, we went through the basics of creating realistic materials. I showed you some of the parameters and how to set them up. Join me in the next episode, in which we will begin creating our exterior shot. We will start off by going over the high-quality materials from the Chaos Cosmos, and we will end the video with the addition of a 360-degree sky texture. I hope you found something useful and helpful in this episode. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.